story from the ABC 15 investigators. A Phoenix man with a history of heart problems collapsed at home. But when paramedics arrived, they didn't take him to the hospital. And he says that decision forever changed his life. How many years is my life shortened? You don't know. I don't know. Now he's speaking exclu exclusively to ABC 15 investigator Melissa Blasius. For nearly two years, I've been listening to Phoenix residents' concerns about ambulance refusals. Phoenix fire officials have told me that they've retrained all of their first responders to comply with a new law that prohibits them from diagnosing patients or dissuading them from getting an ambulance. But Rob Martino over here tells me that it is still happening, and it happened to him. 67-year-old Rob Martino is exhausted, just walking to the end of his driveway. The mailbox down the block is too far. I get up in the morning, get in the shower, I'm sweating because I'm, I'm doing too much. I can't lift the box. I can't, I can't do much. When we visited his North Phoenix home in November, Rob wore a heart defibrillator called a life vest under his shirt 24-7. If this life vest goes off and I can't press the two buttons at the same time, that tells the vest... I'm in trouble. It puts out a loud siren and a warning. Do not touch patient treatment imminent. And then it will zap me. Rob had a prior heart attack in 2019. He's on all these medications. Then on September 2nd, 2023, Rob said the chest pain started in the morning. And by 930 that night, he collapsed in the bathroom, unable to get up, convulsing, barely speaking. Sorry, I'm in, but I'm help you. Rob's significant other, Carrie Gale, called 911. Make sure that he's still awake and still breathing, please. Rob, I'm right here. They're going to be here any second. The help is on the way. We're coming. A fire truck and ambulance were dispatched, lights and sirens on a heart trouble call. What did you expect to happen when you called 911? I knew that it was very serious. My expectation was that they're going to be able, they'll handle it accordingly. Rob says he doesn't remember much about what happened next. Carrie fielded questions from the EMTs. One, I, he said to me, is he an overly dramatic person? I didn't even know how to answer that. And they said, Mr. Martino, you're not having a heart attack. You're having a panic attack. You need to put ice on your neck. You need to breathe from your stomach. And they left. But Rob's condition worsened. Carrie called 911 again at 3 a.m. You did dispatch an ambulance earlier. We're on the way. Rushed to the Mayo Clinic, records show Rob was having a heart attack that night and needed an emergency procedure to install a stent. He's filed this complaint with the state health department, which regulates paramedics and EMTs. Because they didn't transport me, I was in heart attack mode. I mean, I was having a heart attack for five hours. The bottom of my heart will never recover. It's, as they put it, flopping around black. Rob's one of dozens of people who've reached out to the ABC 15 investigators saying when they called 911 needing emergency medical help that Phoenix's firefighter paramedics either never brought an ambulance or convinced them to decline a ride to the emergency room. One patient even caught the firefighters on her ring doorbell camera. That ambulance is 1500 bucks. I mean, we'll take her. You got 1500 bucks. I know what I'd like to do. In another case, the city paid a $1.65 million settlement to Bruce Sandberg without admitting fault after he called 911 for his wife in 2021. But Phoenix firefighters did not provide an ambulance. She died of a heart attack minutes later. My wife would have had a 95% chance of survival if she would have gone in an ambulance. It's a matter of life and death, and since 2022, it's state law that emergency medical technicians may not provide a presumptive diagnosis and may not counsel a patient to decline emergency medical services transportation, even requiring them to explain the risks and consequences if not transported. The Phoenix Fire Department has told ABC 15 its staff has received several trainings on the new law. We have gotten in the trouble in the past. In this mandatory training video, the medical director for the Phoenix Fire Department advised first responders on what to say to patients when they wrap up an exam. Uh, we've reached an endpoint in our assessment. We don't have the tools to give you a formal diagnosis, therefore we suggest that you receive immediate follow-up care. And, and then uh, the best way to get that is probably in an emergency department. <laughs>
Phoenix fire officials say after the law changed, they are transporting more people to the hospital by ambulance. On average, 35 more a day in 2023, and anyone who wants an ambulance gets one. Rob Martino did not get a ride to the hospital after his first 911 call. What is your response to them? It's not fixed. It's broken. The Phoenix Fire Department repeatedly declined to comment on Rob Martino's case, saying it's under investigation. And the State Health Department also declined to comment on Martino's complaint. Meantime, Rob is offering his own ideas for a solution. Similar to signing a form saying you understand your HIPAA rights when you go to a medical office, Rob says, why don't first responders give patients a paper to explain ambulance transportation rights? When they walk in, oh, uh, you know, you call 911, here, please read this and initial the bottom for me. You keep a copy, I keep a copy. So they have proof that they've given her the law. And then if she says don't transport them, it's my fault or her fault, not their fault. And Rob Martino says that he has been able to make some progress on recovery. He no longer has to wear that life vest defibrillator. Even so, he's not sure if he'll live to see the end of the investigation in his case. But he says that doesn't matter if his story can change the system and save someone else's life. I'm investigator Melissa Blasius, ABC 15, Arizona.